Hey, I'm Chris Ralph, the Professional Prospector, and today I'm starting off a series on a new metal. We're going to talk about aluminum. Aluminum is actually the second most metal used by mankind. Um, it, only iron is used more often. Aluminum is used for all kinds of things. It's a strong metal. It's lightweight. Uh, it, it recycles easily. And so there's a lot of good things to say about aluminum, and we're all used to aluminum cans for various beverages. Today we're going to do an experiment and find out how much usable aluminum is in aluminum cans. I've actually gotten a hundred cans here. I've counted them out in the bucket. Of course that counts what's in the crucible too. And we're going to take the aluminum can and all these aluminum cans, we're going to melt them down and see how much is usable. Now you might say, well Chris, if you want to know how much aluminum is in a hundred aluminum cans, well just weigh out a hundred aluminum cans and then you'll know. The truth is, there's a lot more to it than that. You see, we look at this can and say, yeah, it's an aluminum can. But you can clearly see there's paint on the outside and actually there's a coating on the inside too. If you were somehow to remove the aluminum from the aluminum can, what you have is basically a thin, fragile plastic bag that is what's on the inside of this can. And then of course the paint on the outside. Let me show you what that thin plastic bag, what it looks like if you take the aluminum out of an aluminum can. I got a picture. So here's the picture I described. Some guy has basically used chemicals to remove the aluminum from the center section of a Coke can. And you can see what's left behind is a flimsy, fragile little ba plastic bag. And basically the aluminum metal gives strength to the can. The plastic bag is what contains it chemically. So you see, between the paint on the outside and the, the it's a painted on coating. The, the plastic on the inside is not somehow a bag that's manufactured and stuffed into the can. It, it, it's actually a, a sprayed on coating on the inside of the can. And, and that coating is necessary because aluminum is actually a pretty active metal. And if it wasn't for the natural oxide coating that aluminum forms on its surface, you could put aluminum in water and it would start bubbling and evolving hydrogen. There's actually some things, uh, you can see them on the internet where people have been able to do that using things like gallium or other things where the aluminum will actually react with water at regular normal temperatures. So between the paint and the plastic liner on the inside and the fact that there is some aluminum oxide coating on the surface of the aluminum, you know, only part of what the can weighs is actually usable Aluminum. And aluminum, you know, you can cast it and do a lot of things. Aluminum is a really cool metal for uh, home foundry purposes because it's not that hard to melt, although it certainly doesn't melt at room temperature. You have to get it up to at least a, a light red heat. Um, you can melt it and then cast it into all kinds of things. If you're interested in that, there's loads of videos across YouTube that uh, talk about casting aluminum products, everything from car parts to handy dandy things, decorative stuff, you know. It, it's a cool metal to be able to have and use. And I wanna know how much usable aluminum is in an aluminum can. So I've weighed out 100 cans and 100 cans weighs about 1.4 kilograms, 1400 plus grams, and we're gonna melt it all down and see what the, the usable percentage is after I take out uh, you know, the, the junk, because basically I'll end up with a junk on the surface and I'll have to take, I'll take a metal spoon, I'll show you that, and we'll scrape the dross, the junk off the surface, and then we'll pour some bars of aluminum metal and we'll end up with bars like this and we'll take the total weight and we'll figure a percentage then you'll know so let's get started with this experiment and we'll as we go through we'll talk more about it it's going to take me a while I, I can only stuff so many cans at a time into one of these crucibles so it's going to take me a while to melt this all down and and really get it going it'll just take some time. I, I won't make you drag through all that, 
but uh, we'll talk about it more as we go along with this experiment and then at the end we'll go inside to the whiteboard and talk a little bit about numbers and figure out what we got. So I'm going to go ahead and put the crucible in the furnace. Got it all prepped up and ready to go. Okay, and then we're going to light our torch. Turn on the gas, turn on the propane. That pulsing sound, it goes away as the furnace warms up. It's just uh, the initial part when it's cold. And it's cold outside. It's only about 40 degrees right now. Okay, I think we've got the first batch up to heat and we're gonna pull it out and pour it into the, the mold. I cleaned off some junk, poured off the, the material that is not clean and now we're gonna Or a bar. Okay. Load that back up with more of my cans so that I can get her running quick again. It may take two or three of these bars before we can get all hundred soda cans put in. So I'm going to continue and I'll bring you back to show you the pores and all, but here we go with the next run. It lights up without fire because it's already hot enough. I'm ready to turn off the second batch. Okay, I've turned off the second batch. I've got all 100 cans put in. The second batch, you know, it took the second batch to get the 100 cans. And we're gonna pull out this thing. And we're gonna pour Pour our aluminum. I'm trying to get every last little bit in there so we can count it. All right, well, we'll weigh that up and test it and see what we get. And uh, we'll go back into the so inside and to the, look at the whiteboard and we'll do some calculations and figure out what we got. So here's the results of my little experiment. You can see I got two uh, bricks of aluminum and a, a little button here extra just was some uh, other material that was inside the inside the crucible. So how did I do percentage wise? Well I started off with 1410 grams or about 3.1 pounds and after melting it down and cleaning off the junk I ended up with 882 grams or about 1.94 pounds. Roughly that comes out to be about 63%. There was a little bit of other aluminum I probably could have gotten off, you know, kind of used, but it, it, it's in the ballpark of about two thirds. So about one third of the total weight of the can is stuff that burns off or it's oxide, it's other junk, it's just not usable. And uh, so figure when you're running aluminum cans, whatever weight you start with, you're gonna end up with about 
two-thirds uh, of the material being junk. Now here is a piece of the, the junk that I scooped off and I'll show you a picture of that close up so you can see it. So here's that junk, little pile of junk that I picked up out of the uh, crucible when I was smelting the uh, aluminum cans. And you can see it's kind of a mixture of oxides and some carbon and a little bit of aluminum. You know, there's not really much here. It's super light. There's, it's mostly air. So this is the close-up. You can see what it looks like. So that amount of junk, you know, is significant. And that factors into what uh, recyclers will pay you for aluminum cans. Uh, they're not going to pay you for the junk. Actually, when I was putting those cans in and, and having them under the heat with the fire and all, uh, there was actually fire, you know, as the cans freshly went in and the paint and other stuff burned off, you could see some fire coming out the furnace. So, you know, there's not an insignificant amount of junk, but about, about two-thirds, give or take, is about what you're going to get out of the cans melting them down if you save them and use them for making useful aluminum like this and you know aluminum like this is usable for all kinds of castings uh, there's like I say there's lots of videos on the internet about casting things with aluminum a lot of car parts and stuff are made out of aluminum too so there's lots of stuff that you can do with uh, casting. You can also just uh, save it up and uh, send it to a recycler. Certainly in a, a brick form like this, it's a lot more compact and easy to store than a bucket full of cans or something like that. So it's easier to, to store. And you know, the truth is the outlook for uh, base metals like aluminum, copper, zinc, uh, lead, you know, all the different kinds of base metals, the not precious metals, uh, you know, there's, and, and not iron, uh, all the, the base metals, the outlook for them is really good. We're not mining as much as we need. The needs of the planet are growing and the prices haven't been that great and so people haven't been enthusiastic about getting into mining them. So, that's kind of why I'm doing this series on um, different kinds of metals because the future is bright for these metals. Now, the next one we're going to take a look at is making some Tesla bullion. Making product out of once what was once a Tesla automobile. Should be kind of interesting, so come back next week to see that. But also, I want to talk about gold because, you know, I know I've done these several videos on base metals and that kind of stuff, and it's kind of cool, but the, the real thing that most my channel is mostly about is prospecting for gold. And I do a lot of videos, and believe me, lots more videos are coming about gold. And, you know, I, I, if you want to be better at finding gold, if you want to gain that skill, I wrote a book about it, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my book about prospecting for gold right now. So let me tell you a little bit more about my book. Um, it's called Fistful of Gold, and I wrote it because I want you to be able to go out and find for yourself Fistful of Gold. And uh, you can see that it's a, an encyclopedia with all kinds of information, pictures, and that sort of thing. It's not in color, but... Uh, the uh, color would have cost me a lot more to have printed, and so the book would have cost a lot more. It's for sale on Amazon, and you can pick it up. I'll put a link in the description below. I also serve as the editor for a, a prospecting magazine. It's ICMJ's Prospecting and Mining Journal. And honestly, you should check that out. We've got stories uh, and information, legal stuff. Everything you know to increase your skills as a prospector. I write articles in this every month and a lot of other very experienced prospectors contribute to the magazine as well. So check the magazine out. Also, I have a website and the website is uh, at nevadaoutbackgems.com. I'll put a link for it in the description below. But there's gobs of information there that you will find useful in your prospecting efforts. Finally, I want to say 
that I really appreciate your comments and thoughts and even a positive criticism. Don't come on there and just toss out insults because I'll just delete your comments. But if you've got uh, helpful things to say and questions to ask, do write and, and put those in the comments because I answer my comments to people and uh, you'll hear from me in, in you know, in, in responding to you. Uh, so if you've enjoyed this video and you like what you see and you're interested in uh, finding out more, well then sign up, subscribe, and hit the, uh, the notification bell so they'll let you know when I post new videos. And, you know, like it and share it if, again, you, you see stuff that you really are excited about. And I'll be coming out with lots more new videos. And so we'll see you again real soon.